Hello and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be talking about aerodrome fire category, how it is determined, and how every aircraft operation at an aerodrome takes place. Only when the ARFF category with respect to that aircraft is maintained at an aerodrome, and we will determine what that category is with respect to some aircrafts together. So let's get started. What is ARFF? Rescue and Firefighting Services is commonly referred to as Aircraft Rescue and Firefighting or the ARFF and occasionally as Crash Fire Rescue or the CFR. Rescue and Firefighting Services provided at an aerodrome are specifically dedicated to the support of safety in aircraft operations. So what does this mean to us? Firefighting at an aerodrome involves Incident response, hazard mitigation, evacuation, and possible rescue of passengers and crew involved in an aircraft accident or incident within an aerodrome or maybe outside an aerodrome within limits that is determined by the airport operator. So why do we need ARFF? Imagine an aircraft laden with fuel, say about 20,000 to 50,000 gallons catches fire. What are the stakes? What are the number of lives at risk? What are the resources at risk? What can the magnitude of fire be if the situation is not dealt with expertise and within a specific time? You will understand what the specific time is in the next slide. So, because the stakes are huge and the magnitude of the incident can become massive, so the International Civil Aviation Organization defines the requirements for Aerodrome Rescue and Firefighting Services in Annex 14, Volume 1, that is Aerodrome Design and Operations. The ICAO document 9137, that is the Airport Services Manual, Part 1, Rescue and Firefighting provides guidance in the implementation of Annex 14 requirements uniformly for all member states. We must have heard this proverb that fire is a good slave but a bad master. Thus, every second while dealing with fire is crucial. Thus, the concept of response time. Response time is the time between the initial call given to ARFF services and the time when the first responding vehicle or vehicles are in position to apply foam solution at a rate of at least 50% of discharge rate of the aerodrome category. So we'll understand this definition in detail in the later slides, but overall we have understood the concept. Here, the principal objective of ARFF is to save lives. So, the operational objective of rescue and firefighting services is to achieve a response time not exceeding 3 minutes to any part of the operational runway in optimal visibility and surface conditions. Now we will be talking about fire stations. All ARFA vehicles are generally housed in a fire station. The fire station is generally located close to the middle of the runway so that the access of the ARFA vehicles or the CFTs into the runway area is direct and clear and require minimum number of turns. Sometimes it may be such that one fire station housing all the CFTs, it is not possible to meet the response time at all the parts of the aerodrome. So we have satellite fire stations. These are provided at an aerodrome at various locations so as to meet the response time. We will be talking about emergency access roads. These are the roads provided at least up to a distance of 1000 meters from the threshold on each end of the runway and these are the crash gates on each side of the runway so as to allow the CFT vehicles to respond to off airport emergencies up to a distance that is determined by the aerodrome operator. These roads should be such that they are capable of supporting the heaviest vehicles and are usable under all weather conditions because a situation 
of the heavy CFT vehicle sinking into the road must not occur. Roads within 90 meter from the runway should be surfaced to prevent soil erosion and transfer of debris into the runway creating FOD. Now is the time we understand the aerodrome fire category. The aerodrome fire category is determined based on the length of the longest aeroplane normally using the aerodrome and the width of the fuselage of that aircraft. So how is aerodrome fire category determined? It is determined on the overall aeroplane length and the maximum width of the fuselage. So there are a total of 10 categories. This link will help you get the aerodrome fire category based on each aircraft. So let us understand this table with the help of an example. Let us understand and determine the fire category of Boeing 747-800 series. The length of this aircraft is 72.7 meters. So where does it lie? Here, that is 61 meters up to but not including 76 meters of overall length of the aeroplane. The fuselage width is 6.49 meters, that is not more than 7 meters. I am choosing this 7 meters and not this because we already determined the length to fall under this category. So considering both of these, the ARFF category required at an aerodrome for Boeing 747-800 series aircraft to operate at that aerodrome is category 9. Now we will determine the ARFF category for an Airbus 380-800 series aircraft. The length of this aircraft is 72.73 meters, so it falls under this category, 61 meter up to but not including 76 meters. The width of the fuselage here is 7.14 meters. Thus, it does not fall under this category corresponding to its length, but it falls under this category. So, we have a confusion here. Should the RF category corresponding to this aircraft be category 9 or 10? So, we get introduced to the concept that after selecting the category appropriate to the longest aeroplane's overall length, if the aeroplane's fuselage width is greater than the maximum width of that category, which has happened here. Then the category for the aerodrome shall actually be greater by 1 depending on the length of the aircraft. So here the category should be 10 and not 9 corresponding to the length of the aircraft. Now let us understand the concept of 700 movements. When the number of movements of aeroplane in the highest category normally using the aerodrome is less than 700 in busiest consecutive three months, the level of protection provided shall not be less than one category below the determined category. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose an aerodrome is being used by Airbus 320 aircrafts. The ARFF category corresponding to this aircraft is CAT 6. And let us consider this aerodrome is also being used by Boeing 747 aircrafts. But the number of movements is less than 700 in the busiest three consecutive months of the year. Then the level of protection provided at an aerodrome need not be 9 corresponding to Boeing 747 operations, but it should be 1 less than in that category for Boeing 747, which is category 8. There are typical requirements of minimum number of ARF vehicles provided at an aerodrome as per aerodrome fire category. So let's consider category 10, ARFF category. The minimum number of RFF vehicles required is CAT 3. Moving on to types of extinguishing agents. There are two types of extinguishing agents that is principal agent and the complementary agent. Principal agents produce permanent control for several minutes. There are three categories of principal agents. Foam meeting performance level A, that is the protein foam. Foam meeting performance level B, that is aqueous film forming foam or the AFFF. And the foam meeting performance level C. We will understand this in the later slide. Next, we have the complementary agents that provide rapid fire and flame suppression, but they offer only transient control. The material used for complementary agent is generally dry chemical powder or the DCT. 
with this table we will understand the categories that were determined for the principal agent let us refer directly to an aerodrome having arff category of 10 so we will be moving from home meeting performance level a then b to c as you will notice that the water requirement for home meeting performance level a is 48200 which is slightly more than that of water required when foam meeting performance level B is used which is further more than water required when we are using foam meeting performance level C. Thus, for the same aerodrome category of 10, the amount of water required is significantly reducing while we move from A to B to C. Similarly, the discharge rate of foam solution per minute also reduces as we move from A to B to C. So what does it ultimately mean to us is that when a CFT is responding to an emergency and is carrying foam meeting performance level A in its vehicle, the weight of the vehicle is more as compared to when it is carrying foam meeting performance level C. As the weight of the vehicle reduces, the a vehicle is able to produce faster acceleration, thus greater speed and thus minimum response times. So the foam directly impacts the response time that the vehicle has. Thus it is always best for an operator to maintain foam meeting performance level C but due to its high cost generally at most of the aerodromes we have foam meeting performance level B. And here we have the requirements for complementary agents, that is the DCP. For a category 10, the DCP required is 450 kg with a discharge rate of 4.5 kg per second. Now let us understand the requirement of reserve extinguishing agent. A reserve supply of principal agent and complementary agent equivalent to 200% and 100% respectively of principal agent and complementary agent is to be provided in the rescue and firefighting vehicles or must be maintained on the aerodrome for vehicle replenishment purpose. The foam concentrate carried on the firefighting vehicles in excess of the quantities that was mentioned in table 9-1 in the previous slide will contribute to reserve. Sufficient propellant gas that is nitrogen should be included in reserve to utilize the reserve complementary agent that is DCP. Now, if due to a CFT becoming unserviceable or unavailability of required amount of principal and complementary agent, there is a reduction in fire category. This should immediately be communicated to ATC for further dissemination to maintain continued safe aircraft operations at that aerodrome. Thank you, hope you enjoyed this video. Do visit our website aviationabby.com. Thank you very much. Do like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation.